Hey there, Grant here for the Flame Learning Channel. In part one of Maya for Flame Artists, we discussed and looked at the issue of importing 3D geometry that hasn't been cleanly prepped for flame. It's still very workable and people have done so for years. But having an accessible 3D application, it is certainly possible to optimize the 3D geometry before importing it into flame. If you would like to follow along, please go to part 1 to get the link to download the media. I am using Maya 2017 on Mac and I have just launched the application. Now we will be approaching Maya from a flame artist's perspective and will only cover areas that I think are pertinent to prepping 3D models. If you want a 3D artist's approach or more in-depth details, please visit the Maya Learning Channel and choose the Getting Started playlist. Now this is a brand new Maya project and we'll start off by importing the FBX to bring in our content. Go to the File menu and choose the Import option. In the Import window, change the file type to FBX. Now navigate to the location of your FBX file. Select the file and all its information will be loaded into the Options panel. The default settings should be fine for most imports. Click Import and Maya will build the contents of the FBX into the 3D scene. So that's pretty similar to importing the FBX into Flame. Now if you were lucky enough to be given a Maya scene file, it would more or less look like this as well. Now Maya is a feature rich application with lots of tools, interfaces and menus. These can be complex tools with lots of options. So we'll just stick to the basics for what you need as a Flame artist. First and foremost, the interface is divided up into sections. The concepts are similar to Flame, but they are just laid out differently. The main central focus when you look at the Maya interface is the viewports. This visualizes your 3D environment like Action. To access your main toolset, you have a tabbed toolbar which reminds me of the Action and Batch node bins. They are broken down into the different tasks. These tools are also accessible through the file menus at the top of the screen. You can also toggle which type of menu to display depending on the task. Leave this set to Modeling and switch to the Polygons tab in the toolbar. To the left of the interface, you have the Transformation and Viewport controls. This includes Selection, Move, Scale and Rotate. So you choose your Transformation options here instead of the Tools pull down menu that you are used to in Flame. Next to these options, you will find the Outliner. The Outliner is the equivalent to the Action Schematic. All your 3D objects, groups and more will be displayed in this panel. When optimizing the 3D scene for Flame, you will be working quite a bit in this panel. And like Flame, if you select objects in the viewport, they will highlight in the Outliner and vice versa. Next, on the right hand side, you have the various controls displayed for the selected objects. This editor I am using is known as the Attribute Editor. If you don't see it, you can click on this button to open it. Like Flame, it also uses a series of tabs to show the various properties of the selected object. Finally, at the bottom of the screen, you have the Time Bar and Play controls which are self-explanatory. This overall layout is known as the Maya Classic Workspace. You can toggle the workspace using this pull-down menu. Selecting any of the other workspaces will rearrange the layout and even hide some widgets to gear the interface for very specific 3D tasks. So that covers how everything is laid out in comparison to Flame. What you'll also be pleased to hear is that the 3D scene navigation is not too far off from what you've used in Flame. I am using a mouse and keyboard and here are a few familiar keyboard shortcuts. Holding ALT and left mouse button orbits the view. Holding ALT and middle mouse button tracks the view. And holding ALT and right mouse button dollies the view. So by holding ALT and switching between the different mouse buttons, you can quickly move around the 3D view. 
This is the same in Flame. Now when you want to focus or frame a selected object, you choose your object and press the F keyboard shortcut. And if you want to frame all the objects in the viewport, press the A keyboard shortcut. You can do the same in Flame, but the keyboard shortcuts are Space F and Space A respectively. Now if you want more than one viewport to see your Maya scene, just press Spacebar. This will give you the top, front and side views as well as the perspective view. Now wherever you place your cursor and press Spacebar again, will switch to a single viewport with that view. Finally, if you do have a camera in the scene and you want to look through it, click the Panels pull-down menu, choose Perspective, followed by the name of the camera. If you click and scrub the time bar, you can see the same camera move that was shown in Flame. Now select the robot body and frame it to the viewport. When you work in Maya, you have many more levels of selection unlike Flame. For example, you can select an object, its faces, its edges or vertices and adjust them how you like. If you right-click on the object, you will get the contextual menu. At the top of the menu, you will drag the cursor to switch the different selection modes. The reason for showing you this is in case you are in the wrong selection mode, you can just choose Object Mode to select the entire geometry. Finally, the Maya viewport can be configured to show different aspects of the 3D scene. This can all be controlled via the mini toolbar above each individual viewport. So let's say you want to hide the grid. Just disable the grid button. Moving across the toolbar, you can toggle between wireframe and shaded, or you can even display both at the same time. One thing to point out is that this view is currently not displaying the robot textures, even though they were imported from the FBX. So enable the Textures button. The next button down is Lighting, and if there are any lights in the 3D scene, you can enable them here instead of the generic ambient lighting. So this will more or less give you an idea of how things will look in Flame. As for some extra visual controls, you can enable ambient occlusion as well as anti-aliasing. Please remember that this just affects how you see things in the viewport. These settings will not affect the 3D geometry, any exports or renders you may output from Maya. This is just for viewing purposes. Please feel free to dig a bit deeper into the Maya interface and viewports, but hopefully what we've gone through in this video should be enough to work your way around Maya to optimize your 3D geometry for Flame. In the next video on Maya for Flame Artists, I will show you the different workflows and techniques you could use to get your models ready for Flame. Comments, feedback and suggestions are always welcome and appreciated. Thank you for watching and please subscribe to the Flame Learning Channel for future videos.